Copa America 2024 underway. Group A, Peru 0, Chile 0. So some thoughts about this game. Well, looking through the stats for a moment, Peru registering 7 shots to Chile's 11, but had 4 on target to Chile's 1. 35% possession to Chile's 65, passes 277 to Chile's 519, and 67% pass accuracy to Chile's 80. Lots of fouls in this game, split roughly even, 18 for Peru, 19 for Chile. This was another installment in El Clásico del Pacifico, this rivalry between Peru and and Chile in the Copa America. This was one of the games I was looking forward to the most. Did not produce any goals, but some interesting on the field play, a lot of it lacking, let's just say. So for Peru, a lot of it went a little bit as expected. There was very limited inspiration and creativity. In large part, it's a team that's built off of players that are, you know, generationally speaking, they're getting up there in, in age. A lot of fans feel like there should be a transition to a, a much younger team. You know, Paulo Guerrero, the, uh, the one of the veterans on this squad, he's already 40 years old. But then again, you know, on the other side, Chile has a lot of their old veterans as well. Claudio Bravo in goal, he's 41 years old. They're also in a sort of a weird phase. Both teams are not performing very well in the South American qualifiers at the moment. It was a pretty ugly game, and I think the best real chance <clears throat> for the first half came Chile's way in the 29th minute. There was a really well-timed cross into the box that met the head of Alexis Sanchez. He fails to convert that, though. He gets in on a loose ball to fire it, but he puts it over. He falls to the floor with his, head, his hands in his head knowing it should have been on target, and if it was on target, I think in that moment... The Peruvian goalkeeper, Galese, is most likely beaten. The game kind of stabled off after that, and Peru started to find their footing. Then they started to cultivate some opportunities here and there, especially in the second half. I think it was around the 57-minute mark you had Lapadula. He scuffed the shot. Um, he, was dis he was cut off a little bit by Chilean traffic at the back, and, uh, and Claudio Bravo was able to snuff that out, coming out off his line and goal. Um... Bravo also was forced into making a save on another effort from Lampadula's bouncing volley. There was a big scramble in the box for the rebound, but Bravo eventually was able to, to claim it before Peru could, could pounce on it and fire in to, to take the lead late on in the game. And I guess towards the end of this match, Peru seemed like they had a little bit more energy and Chile was kind of losing the ball in midfield. But as far as like really showing uh, like a, an offensive sense of, of creativity, really getting something going forward, Peru was lacking. Both teams were lacking. But I feel like Peru missed a little bit of cutting edge in the final 20 minutes that may have allowed them to take away a victory if they were able to, um, to get something from it. And then it was getting very choppy. There was players falling all, all over the pitch. The referee at times seemed like he didn't really quite have control over the game as much. Both teams had free kicks, respectively, in the dying stages of the match. And it was a very grinding uh, South American type of affair between these two big uh, rivals. And I think overall a draw is probably the deserved result. If you're Peru, maybe you're happier with this result than Chile because Chile have to play Argentina next. Very strong chance Chile will head into match day three on one point needing to beat Canada. That's a dangerous situation to be in. Um, having to play proactively against a Canadian side that gave Argentina a lot of problems yesterday that can hurt you and punish you on the flanks. Having to chase that, having to take the game to Canada, that's really dangerous. For Peru, yes, it's, it's going to be... Uh, a bit scary because they'll close the, the group out against Argentina, but they have an opportunity to get more points when they play Canada next. My concern for Peru, though, is they're coming up against a Canadian side that's going to be faster than them, younger than them, and I just wonder if Peru is going to be able to get on the score sheet. 
it's possible that both of these two teams here will get the best of Canada because of that tournament pedigree, the experience, the, the tough Conmebol style of play over the Can but if you're look if you're looking at this as Canada, you have to be hopeful. Football is all about matchups, so we'll see what happens. I still favor one of these two teams here in front of you to advance behind Argentina, but this group is pretty open, I feel. It's pretty open. Um, I think you're going to be primarily frustrated more if you're Chile because Alexis Sanchez, he had to score that chance. He had to score that that opportunity. He knows he should have scored. Uh, Overall, I think Peru has the slightly more favorable remaining schedule in terms of the order of matches, but I think Chile still has the best chance of coming through. And also because they have the best manager with Gareca. I think Chile will improve against Argentina. It's just a matter of can they get a result? Can they? If Peru loses to Canada, if they don't get anything from Canada, honestly, now that I think about it, if now that I think about it, if Peru does not beat Canada, I just I don't see how they come out of this group. So it's going to be tight. It's going to be tough. We'll see what happens.